Okay, so as you can see, we have our outline form already drawn in with Sharpie. And the first thing to do is to cut to depth with your 329 or 330. You do this by going up and down, up and down, until you reach the entire depth of your burr. Once you've done this, and I like to start this at the dovetail, you will then extend your isthmus all the way through the central groove. Here I've gotten to about half. I'm going to clean it every time to make sure that I'm not missing my groove. And I'm going to continue taking it all the way to one of my fishtail extensions. Once you have your central groove taken all the way to one of your fishtail extensions, we're going to remove the handpiece, clean out everything that we've prepped so far, and make sure that there are no grooves that we missed. It's now time to do the other fishtail extension, the buckle and lingual extensions. So let's go ahead and do that. There's the lingual extension. Again, clean every time you make a cut. And now we're going to do the buckle extension. The greatest thing about using the 329 burr instead of a 330 is that it is 0.6 millimeters in diameter as opposed to 0.8. This allows us as novices a little bit more flexibility in terms of mistakes. Uh, if one was to miss one's um, groove, we could simply readjust by taking a slightly larger burr and cutting preferentially towards one side in order to reorient the um, extension right in the groove. At this point, what you would like to do is take a 245 burr in your low speed handpiece. Uh, a 245 is like a 330, but slightly longer. Um, and what you want to do is you want to refine all of your axial walls. The axial walls are the vertical ones. And what I'm doing here is I'm literally just taking my 245 as fast as it will go in the low speed handpiece and rubbing it or letting it cut against the axial walls. And I trace the entire prep. Part of this will help widen the prep. Again, I started with the 329, which is a little bit narrower, but part of it will also make sure that if there was any surface roughness, it goes away with my 245 in the low speed. And of course, once you get to your dovetail, you have to tip your burr ever so slightly to make the dovetail divergent, as you can see right now. The final step would be to achieve the 1.5 millimeter pulpal depth while trying to keep the pulpal floor flat. In all of these cuts, as you noticed, because I was using burrs like the 329 and 245, which have sharp uh, surfaces on the bottom, they can leave gouges in your pulpal floor. To flatten it out, we're going to need a flat burr, and now I'm using the 34 burr in my low speed handpiece. The 34 is a really short flat burr, so therefore you're going to only concentrate on the pulpal floor. When I'm doing this, I'm pressing down as opposed to against the vertical walls. This will also give me a little bit of extra depth because the 329 has a depth of 1.2 millimeters, but our target is 1.5 to 1.9 millimeters. At this point, your prep should be more or less finished, but let's just take a closer look to see if there are any problems. I noticed that in one part, I did not have enough depth. This is very common, especially around the outermost parts of your groove extensions. So once again, I'm going to take my 34 and drill mainly at the ends of those extensions to ensure that I have 1.5 millimeters right at the groove extensions. Time to do another reassess. And here you can see that near the lingual extension, and the lingual extension of the fishtail, I have a couple of sharp corners. I also don't have my isthmus as flat as it should be and as straight as it should be. So I'm gonna go back to my 245 and smooth out all the sharp corners that I see, make my isthmus a lot straighter. 
you don't want a cusp tip sort of invading into the isthmus. It makes it harder for your restoration. It makes it not an ideal prep. And there you have it. Most of the errors have now been fixed. The sharp corners are much rounder. The isthmus is now much straighter.